Hey there, today I want to show you two headstones in Little Compton, Rhode Island. The first, right here, says, In memory of Lydia, wife of Mr. Simeon Palmer, died in 1754. And the second, which is just a couple feet away from the first, says, In memory of Elizabeth, who should have been the wife of Mr. Simeon Palmer, died in 1776. <laughs> Now, uh, what do you imagine when you read these two gravestones? Like, uh, what might you guess happened back in the 1700s that could have led to these two inscriptions? The obvious answer is that Elizabeth here was jealous of Lydia, right? That Lydia, like, swooped in and married the man that Elizabeth was pursuing, and so Elizabeth decided to have her dissatisfaction at the situation forever immortalized on her headstone. In short, Elizabeth was some kind of like jealous single woman lashing out at a married wife, right? Like she really just wanted everyone to know how much she resented Lydia. Well, from what I gather, that little story just might be exactly what Mr. Simeon Palmer, the man mentioned on both of these headstones, might have wanted you to think. The truth behind these stones is more than likely a whole lot weirder and maybe even a little bit more sinister than a simple domestic dispute. No. All right, so uh, before I get too deep into this story, I should first mention that the vast majority of available information on these two headstones was written like decades after they were first erected. Like I found pretty much all of what I'm about to tell you here in some old newspaper articles written back in the late 1800s and early 1900s. The articles claim to have sourced their info from people who were like actually alive to know Elizabeth and Simeon and Lydia. So, you know, there's probably at least some kind of truth to them, but you just never know for sure with these things. So just consider this a warning that the line between history and legend is a little bit blurry when it comes to these graves, uh, despite the fact that most of the articles swear that the story is undoubtedly true. <laughs> Anyway, though, one of the first things that uh, you might be pretty shocked to learn about Elizabeth here is that she actually was married to Simeon Palmer at one point in her life, and for a pretty long time, too. For 21 years, from 1755 all the way up until the day she died, her and Simeon were legally wed. According to some historians that uh, investigated these stones over a century ago, old marriage records list the union as plain as day which kind of right off the bat destroys the whole narrative that Elizabeth was like jealous of Lydia, right? Like how could she be jealous of Simeon's wife if she was Simeon's wife? And uh, honestly, the whole like jealousy narrative is eroded even further when you consider the fact that Elizabeth actually named her first and only daughter with Simeon after Lydia, who was uh, Simeon's first wife. Elizabeth and Simeon reportedly got married just about a year after Lydia passed away, and then Elizabeth named their daughter after the first wife. <laughs> oh, and uh, if you're wondering where Simeon's headstone is, by the way, the info on that is kind of scattered. Like, a lot of old newspapers that I read said that Simeon's headstone used to be placed somewhere around here by Lydia and Elizabeth before it was, like, uh, broken into pieces and then half buried by the dirt and just, like, kind of generally lost to time. But I did also read that Simeon might have moved away to New York after Elizabeth died. So I really couldn't tell you for sure what the truth is myself. One thing is for sure, though. <laughs> These headstones have attracted quite a bit of attention over the years, like uh, postcards, newspaper articles, Ripley's Believe It or Not entries, like you name it. Plenty of people have uh, tried their hand at coming up with some kind of story to explain the inscriptions. Everything from the standard jealousy narrative to assumptions that Elizabeth must not have been very interested in getting intimate with Simeon. <laughs> But for the most part, the stories were like, they were all just guesses, like at least when they were being discussed at the national level. 
See, if you want to hear a more credible explanation for these headstones, then you got to look at the local papers, uh, at local historians. You know, you got to look at the stories that were written by people who claim to have heard the facts from the generation that came before them, who heard it from the generation that came before them, who heard it from the people before them, and so on and so forth. So uh, without further ado, how about I clue you in on the local legend? <laughs> So two of the best sources that I found on this subject that I'll really be leaning on a lot here were actually written within just a couple years of each other. The first is from 1899, where a woman from Brooklyn traveled out to Little Compton to investigate the Simeon Palmer story and then send her findings back home to be published in the Brooklyn Standard Union. And the second, which was published in the Newport Mercury in 1901. This time, the author is an MLT Aiden who actually lived in Little Compton themselves. Uh, both of these stories claim to have uncovered the facts from like local Rhode Island oral history and town records, and both of them follow roughly the same story. So if these two authors didn't really interact that much, then uh, it kind of adds some credibility to the story that they both independently came up with the same narrative. A narrative, by the way, that really paints this headstone as nothing more than a bitter, angry monument to a pretty ridiculous domestic dispute. You see, uh, Elizabeth's headstone was actually put up by Simeon Palmer and only Simeon Palmer. Elizabeth herself had no control over it, and neither did any of her blood relatives. When Elizabeth got sick and died, Simeon told her family that he would cover the entirety of the funeral expenses if they would grant him full control over the gravestone. What the family didn't realize, though, was that Simeon was going to take that opportunity to etch an inscription into the stone that many would later describe as purely vindictive. This inscription is reportedly meant to be a snide little remark about Elizabeth's failure to uphold her end of the marriage. Elizabeth, who should have been the wife of Simeon Palmer, is actually supposed to mean that Elizabeth was a wife in name only. That she didn't actually do what a wife was supposed to do. That uh, she failed to support Simeon and she didn't fulfill her marital duties and all that kind of stuff. It's supposed to be interpreted as, well, Elizabeth should have been my wife, but she really didn't put in the effort to make the marriage work, so she might as well have not been my wife based on how she acted. (laughs) So with that in mind, I'm sure you're wondering, like, what exactly could Elizabeth possibly have done to deserve that kind of sentiment? Like, what did she do to drive such a wedge into the marriage? Well, I'll tell you in just a minute. But before I do, I want to let you know one last critical little bit of info. Something that really hammers home just how acidic this stone really is. You see, uh, that wedge issue in Simeon and Elizabeth's marriage... It was actually strong enough to split them up, at least physically. Like, uh, while they remained legally married, Elizabeth actually spent the last few years of her life living apart from Simeon, like in her own house, raising their daughter on her own. (laughs) But what's really remarkable is despite the split, Elizabeth still really did her best to take care of Simeon. Like, every week she did his laundry and mended his clothes and, like, gave him an ear to talk to. And not to mention she raised his daughter that she agreed to name after his first wife. (laughs) So if she's doing all that, like, what could she have possibly done in the first place that was horrific enough to warrant a stone like this, like to justify such a negative inscription to sit atop her final resting place. (laughs) Well, let me tell you. And (laughs) just as a warning, you animal lovers might want to pause the video here and take a deep breath before hearing this. (laughs) What Elizabeth Palmer refused to do was consume a diet that consisted mostly of domestic cat meat yeah i'm not kidding that was the issue that was what simeon considered unforgivable like that is elizabeth's great crime not wanting to eat cat (laughs) like this whole part of the story is really crazy but again the sources that i found 
all swear to have heard it from people who heard it from people who were actually there. Like, reportedly, the whole thing started with a man named Richard Billings, who was a like a minister in Little Compton. And for whatever reason, he just got it into his head that cats were like the next big livestock animal. And I guess Simeon Palmer admired Billings very much and just totally fell into lockstep with the new diet. Although I should mention that a lot of the accounts that I read said that Simeon only really got on board with the new diet after <laughs> suffering from severe sunstroke and going mildly insane. <laughs> But the bottom line is that whatever his reasoning, Simeon was completely committed to eating cat. He immediately forced the new diet upon his first wife, Lydia, like requiring that she would a- adhere to the new menu just as feverishly as he did. And, and some accounts of the story that I saw even claim that eating all that cat was what eventually killed Lydia. But I can't really stamp my name on that one. It seems a little speculative to me. Anyway, though, when Simeon married Elizabeth, she very quickly rebelled against the practice. Like some say that Simeon hid his little quirk from her before they got married. But whatever the case, Elizabeth just did not want to spend the rest of her life eating cat. And that is what drove them apart. This is the wedge issue. Simeon would go on to refer to Elizabeth as a delicate type, (laughs) apparently completely refusing to allow her to just eat what she wanted to eat. And so, despite the fact that Elizabeth did Simeon's chores and raised his child, here she lies today with a slanderous headstone telling half of a story. (laughs) Well, no more, Elizabeth. (laughs) We know what happened to you. Like, uh, we know what those words truly mean. The story that they truly hide, not wanting to eat cat, is not a crime deserving of this kind of treatment, Elizabeth. We all get it. We all know. Don't you worry. You rest in peace, Elizabeth. Lord knows that you deserve it. (laughs) And thank you for watching.